One major factor of Gotham Knights that I think is getting a lot of people really excited for its launch in just a few days here now is the open world. The scale of the city here is much bigger than we've seen in any of the previous games. Just from the gameplay that we've seen of the characters driving the bat bikes around or gliding around the city, you can just see how massive the landmass of the city is. It takes up a large width. The skyscrapers do reach a pretty impressive height. I know that some fans want the buildings to be taller, and I think that's fair. When you look at something like Batman 89 and how they depicted Gotham City, for example, I think that's what many of us are hoping to see at some point in Gotham City in a video game, just those massive monoliths of buildings. But for now, I think that the size of the buildings in Gotham Knights is going to work just fine. I think, again, the scale of the map looks great. Not only that, they're building downward as well. There's going to be tunnels beneath the city. So I think in terms of verticality, it's going to feel more vertical, maybe, than the skyscrapers would lead you to believe. But you'll just need to go beneath the surface to really see the full scope of that. But there is one location in particular that I am really excited to visit. And, I mean, there's many places that I'm excited to see how they're realized in this game. I'm excited to go to the Belfry and explore it. I'm excited to check out Wayne Tower. I'm excited to check out wherever Oswald Cobblepot is hiding out. But the place that I am more excited to visit than anywhere else is bar none Arkham Asylum. Now first let's just get the obvious out of the way, Batman Arkham Asylum is what really kicked Batman off in video games. We had some good outings as Batman in the video game space before that, we just had Lego Batman the year prior. Batman Begins the video game was not bad, I still play it from time to time and think it was an interesting precursor to the Arkham games, but Arkham Asylum was a game in 2009 that was totally set only in Arkham Asylum. There wasn't an open world Gotham City, you could roam the halls of the asylum, you could roam the island that the asylum was set on. But that was pretty much the only location that you could explore. There were some scarecrow nightmares that took you sort of loosely to some areas of Gotham City and Wayne Manor. But overall, you were very much locked in the asylum. You felt very claustrophobic in these hallways and in these buildings because, again, there was just nothing else to explore. There was nowhere else to go. And that made for a really compelling experience. Since then, they have definitely moved away from that claustrophobic level design. They've gone more into trying to make you feel like you are Batman in Gotham City, and so it feels much more open. There's a lot more to explore, which of course has so many positives, but I do think that you do lose some of that atmosphere. And so going into Gotham Knights, where it's another game that looks like it is evolving even beyond Gotham Knights open world, where it's going to be even bigger than that and have even more to explore. And on top of that, we're not playing as Batman in this game, we're playing as the Bat Family. There are four playable characters, and I feel that that in some ways might detract from the feeling of feeling stuck, where with Arkham Asylum you were stuck playing as Batman in a very limited space. You didn't really have allies present with you, you had Oracle on comms, but Robin wasn't there in the asylum with you, and so you were very much in this isolated area. With Gotham Knights you can go visit the Belfry anytime. But when I was watching those first 16 minutes with Batgirl and seeing the level design, it looks like they've included some of that creepy aesthetic that the Arkham games did so well as you're exploring Kirk Langstrom's lab. And I am really interested to see what Warner Brothers Games Montreal's Arkham Asylum will look like. Warner Brothers Games Montreal, of course, made Batman Arkham Origins, but Arkham Asylum did not make an appearance. Rocksteady did include Arkham Asylum in their original game. Arkham Asylum shows up again in Arkham Knight. Arkham City was essentially the idea of Arkham Asylum, but on a much larger scale where it consists of a few city blocks rather than just being a facility. And so I do feel that Rocksteady has very much left their mark on the infamous mental asylum of Gotham City, and I'm really interested to see what another game studio's take on it will be and how it will compare, because again, the Rocksteady iteration is just so iconic and so beloved, and it's really that first game that made us all fall in love with Batman in the game space. Again, there had been good Batman games before this, but Arkham Asylum was that first time that I think the meme started going around of every critic saying it made you feel like Batman because it got his stealth so right and it got the ambience so right and it got the atmosphere so right. And with Gotham Knights, again, it's going in a different, more open world direction and even the later Arkham games did the same thing. But just that iconic look and feel of Arkham Asylum, I'm interested to see if it has carried over to this iteration of Gotham City, especially where it's going to look completely different. I am very interested to see how early in the game I can go over to Arkham Asylum and explore it. And not only that, I'm interested to see who inhabits 
Arkham Asylum and how explorable it is. For all we know, maybe you can go visit the asylum but can't go inside, or maybe you can go inside but in a very limited way, or maybe it will be fully explorable in this map. One thing that I've always thought would be really cool is if you could walk down a row of cell blocks and talk to Riddler and Two-Face and Killer Croc and Mad Hatter and Poison Ivy and have them all incarcerated and maybe have them hint at details from the story or get their take on what is going on in the story and interrogate them and see where they are in terms of their rehabilitation. Maybe Two-Face, for example, is trying to rehabilitate after the death of Batman and Jim Gordon, or maybe he's slowly turning into the judge and teasing a, a potential sequel, and maybe we could see some villains that aren't necessarily utilized as boss battles or main villains of this story that might show up in future games, and maybe we could start getting some foreshadowing for that. And then when you defeat Harley Quinn and Clayface and Mr. Freeze, maybe you can take them to Arkham Asylum and have them be characters that you can talk to and interrogate and go to for information about crimes that are going to happen in the open world. Again, they haven't revealed much about Arkham Asylum's role in the story or in the game in general, and I don't really blame them for that. They've been very tight-lipped about how this story plays out in Gotham Knights and what the role of really anything in Gotham has in correspondence to how you as the Knights investigate crimes or how it integrates into the main story, but I am really excited and interested to see this new take on the Batman universe from Warner Brothers Games Montreal, and I'm really excited to see their take not only on this iconic location, but on the characters that inhabit it, and I hope that we just get to see a huge look at this version of Gotham City, and I want to see this version of the universe really fleshed out. But feel free to let me know in the comments below what locations and characters you're most excited to visit first when you get the chance to play Gotham Knights. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I will be covering this game pretty much non-stop until it launches, and then I'll be doing a lot of post-launch content on this channel as well. So please be sure to hit the notification bell if you want to see those videos when they go live, and we will see you guys in the next one.